Hi, I'm Helen Coupland Smith from Time2 Resources. Welcome to this third video on understanding price elasticity of demand. In this video, I'm going to look at how the shape of the demand curve varies depending upon the elasticity of demand. If you want to make notes as you follow the video, why not download the handy PDF note taker? The link is available in the description box below. Often when we draw a demand curve, we're using it just to show a movement along the demand curve. This movement is as a result of a change in price, leading to a change in quantity demanded. We do this without really giving much consideration to the price elasticity of demand. In this video, we're going to look at how important the gradient of the demand curve is to tell us about elasticity, and also how the elasticity of demand varies as we move along a demand curve. If a product is price inelastic, the change in demand will be proportionally less than the change in price. This is shown by a steep demand curve. Here we can see that as the price changes from P to P1, the quantity demanded changes from Q to Q1. We are still showing a change in price by a movement along the demand curve, but the change from P to P1 is much greater than the increase from Q to Q1. If a product is price inelastic, a fall in price will lead to a fall in sales revenue. We can see this on our diagram. Sales revenue is calculated as price times quantity, so P times Q is a greater area than P1 times Q1. If we have a product that has a price elasticity of demand that is elastic, the change in demand will be proportionally more than the change in price. We can see here that the slope of the demand curve is different. It is now only gradual. So as we move from P to P1, the quantity demanded will increase from Q to Q1. We still have a movement along the demand curve as a result of a change in price, but a small change in price has led to a significantly larger change in quantity demanded. This shows us that if we were to lower the price of an elastic product, there would be an increase in sales revenue. The area P times Q is much smaller than the area of P1 and Q1. Here we can see that we can use a straight line demand curve to demonstrate the fact that the PD varies as we move along the demand curve. Remember that price and quantity are showing you actual numbers. For PD we are interested in the percentage change between these numbers. The top half of our curve is where the elasticity of demand will be elastic. The bottom half of our curve, the PED, will be inelastic. The extremes of this would be perfect elasticity, where the PED is infinity, or perfect inelasticity, where the PED would be equal to zero. In the middle of our curve, we have unitary elasticity of demand. This is where the PED is equal to minus one, or if we're using absolute numbers, one. This is where the percentage change in price will be equal to the percentage change in quantity demanded. We can show this using a numerical example. If we look at our graph, let's look at the y-axis, price. The numbers are the actual numbers, so a change from 9 to 8 is a change of 1. If we move towards the bottom of our axes and towards the end of our demand curve, a change from 3 to 2 is also a change of 1. But remember, for PD, we're not interested in the actual change, we're interested in the percentage change. A change of 9 to 8, a change of 1, 1 as a percentage of 9 will be much smaller than at the other end of our axes, where a change from 3 to 2 was also a change of 1, but 1 as a percentage of 3 will be much larger. We can use this to calculate our PD. So we can actually calculate the PD at any point along the demand curve. We're going to calculate it if the price first of all changes from 9 to 8, in which case the quantity demanded would change from 5 to 10, and then towards the lower end of our demand curve we're going to calculate the PD if the price was to change from 3 to 2. Remember the formula for PD is percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. Why not pause the video whilst you carry out these calculations? How did you get on? Hopefully you've calculated that if the price changes from 9 to 8, there is a PD of 9. Therefore, it is elastic. 
at the lower end of our line, the price change from 3 to 2, the PD is 0.4, i.e. it is inelastic. If we were to carry on calculating this along our demand curve, the lower down we got, the greater the degree of inelasticity until we reached a situation where demand was perfectly inelastic. Equally, at the other end, as we move from the centre upwards, we will see that the elasticity continues to increase. This would carry on until we reach an extreme where we had a perfectly elastic product. So, the key points, the gradient of the curve shows the price elasticity. Unitary price elasticity of demand is where the percentage change in price is equal to the percentage change in quantity demanded. An inelastic demand curve will have a steep gradient. If a product was perfectly inelastic, this would be a straight vertical line. An elastic demand curve has a gradual gradient. If it was perfectly elastic, this would be a horizontal line. We can use these curves to show the relationship between price, quantity demanded and therefore sales revenue. Thank you for watching this video on understanding price elasticity of demand and how to use demand curves to show this concept. If you haven't already done so, why not subscribe to the Time to Resources YouTube channel. You might also want to look at some of our revision guides for business and economics. The links can be found for eBay in the description box below.